I'm Johnny K. This is part seven, installing the main bearings and taking readings for the big block Chevy. These are some tools I use. I'll use a three-point internal mic. And this is just the gauge to make sure this tool is calibrated correctly. We set this in here. Cranker and zero should line up on the zero mark. I use a outside mic for our crank, some brake cleaner, and a rag, lint-free rag. First step that I do is I'll take brake cleaner, I'll spray it in here. I'll take the air holes, I'll give her a shot of air, just make sure everything's clean. Then I'll set the bearing in place. Remember, do not put any oil under the bearing. This surface is dry. Remember that. Nothing goes under here. It's dry, 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 dry. You place your bearing in. There's going to be a tang on the bearing. Make sure that tang lines up in that groove. Also, make note of your oil hole. The bearing has an oil hole in it. Make sure the oil hole goes down. This is the top, and the piece that goes here is the bottom. I always like to check my bearings, just to make sure they're what the manufacturer says or that I didn't get the wrong part. So I'm just going to use this little zero to one outside mic. When you mic something that has a radius, it's better to use a little ball bearing on the end. So I put a standard in here to make sure zero was on the zero reference line. When 
you put this ball on here, it makes it 0 0.200. So that's going to be a reference point, so we can actually call that zero. Now, Clevelite bearings, these are standard bearings, and when you look on their website, this bearing should mic out to be 0 0.0934. What we're going to do, we're just going to check it real quick. .0934, the manufacturer said. If you're a little confused on your numbers, remember what I said about having your, your digital caliper? Just to verify what you checked and what you're reading is the same, let's check it real quick. Let's get you real close. Okay, this says She says upper on there. So it tells you what side to put it on. This is what they call a tang. Kind of sticks out a little bit. Remember, that's going to go in this groove. Here's your oil hole. It tells you upper, it's got the tang. It can only go on one way. Remember, do not put any oil under the bearing. This surface is dry. Remember that. Nothing goes under here. It's dry, 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 dry. All right, now on these bearings, all you're going to do, you're just going to place it in. Push down on it, make sure the hole is lined up. And that's it. And that's basically how you put your bearings in. All of our bearings in on the top half of the motor. And you're just looking to make sure all the holes are lined up and that the tang is on the correct side. Check out the tang, the holes are cool, cool, good. Holes are lined up, oil holes are lined up. Tang's on the, that side, lined up, tang's on that side. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the main caps and go and install the bearings. Now that we have all of our main bearings in the upper half of the block and we have the main bearings in the lower blocks, I just want to point something out to you. On the main cap, if you look real close, there's an arrow and the arrow points the direction forward, front of motor. You can see I got number one. So I'm standing at the front of the motor, this is number one, this is number two, and so forth. So, you position your main cap so the arrow is pointing towards the front of the motor. With the ARP bolts, or any bolts you get, it's a good idea to check over the threads. Clean the threads off if there's any debris. I usually just take a wire brush, just clean them off, or you can take on a bench grinder, a little wire wheel, and just roll it. Hit the threads, just make sure all the burrs are off. Here at Washers, they have a chamfer. What you're going to want to do is the chamfer always goes up towards the head of the bolt. You can squirt some oil on here or use the ARP Ultra Torque. Put some uh, oil on the washer. Put some oil on the threads and put in. I like to use oil when I'm just miking stuff and then for final assembly I end up using the Ultra Torque. So what you're going to do, you put your bolts in Get them all started. You're going to use a soft blow hammer. Give her a tap down to make sure it's completely seated in there. Once it's seated, you're going to grab your torque wrench, start out 20 foot pounds of torque. You all start in the inside and work your ways out. So Torque this to 20 foot pounds, 20 foot pounds, 20 foot pounds, 20 foot pounds. Then you're going to increase by 20 foot pounds, keep increasing all the way up to 100 foot pounds. Now that you got your main cap bolted down and torqued, you got your new bearings in, now it's time we got to take measurements. called 
three point indicator. I got this off eBay for a hundred bucks. This is a 2.5, two and a half to three inch, three point internal mic. Simple to use, you just put it in there, crank her open. I usually like to get it tight and I back it off a little bit and I kind of just wiggle it around just a little bit and you take your reading you're done you don't have to transfer it to a mic same thing go to the next one and main cap number one take your reading then you're going to transfer it to main cap number two or number two same thing or you can use your dial bore gauge and your micrometer now we're going to come on mic the crank journal the way I like to use a mic is I'll kind of hold it hold it in the back with one hand and use this hand to swing it back and forth kind of make it arc up and down what you're doing is you're trying to find center because you don't want to be cocked with your instrument otherwise it's going your numbers are going to be off so you just I usually just place it on the journal like so loosen her up you can hold it like that however you want to hold it and I'll just go back and forth up and down you just go back and forth and make an arc you just start to tighten it up ever so slightly go up and down you're just trying to find center okay remember it's not a C clamp <laughs> don't tighten the hell out of it so then you would read your number okay you always want to take two measurements zero and ninety Then I grab my cheap $20 digital caliper. I'll throw it on here. I'll take a quick reading. 2.747. Okay. And I know that my numbers on here are more accurate, but I just want to verify that I wasn't reading on here that I read this wrong. I was reading 2.547. So this is kind of just a handy reference tool to have. All right, so I finished all my numbers. I wrote them all down. Just want to share with you. These are the crank clearances that I want. Everybody's application is a little different. This is what I, I want for, this is more for a high performance application. Gives you a little more oil slopping around the bearings, keeping your bearings cool. These are the numbers when I measured the block, the bore in the block with the bearings in it. I just kind of label it outside bearing and then on the other side of the oil hole, the inside, just for my reference. And then I took the outside micrometer and I mic the journals. I took two measurements, zero and 90, and all my numbers were the same, so my crank's pretty copacetic. Okay, so then after that, you just basically take the numbers number one bore and subtract it from the number one crank and this is the number I got you do that for each one one through five now your fifth which is the rear main journal that's usually going to be about half thousandths bigger than the first four just just the side note I'll show you this write this down handy piece of information basically you uh, the front four main bearings should be within 0 .0004 of each other. And then the rear main bearing is usually about 0 .0005 bigger 
than the four mains. So do all your math, write it down, and all mine come within .0004 of each other. So now I'm good to go.